It was an overcast Saturday afternoon in late October, when the small town of Willow Creek lay quiet under a blanket of heavy gray clouds. The autumn chill was creeping in, and the air was thick with the scent of damp leaves and wood smoke from nearby chimneys. Three friends, Jack, Mike, and Ryan, were playing baseball at the edge of town, where an old field stretched out, half wild and bordered by thick forest. Jack, the oldest and most daring, was pitching, and Mike, usually more of a cautious type, was at bat. Ryan, who was easily the most nervous of the trio, stood in the outfield, watching the ball with intense focus, ready to chase it down. Come on, Mike, Jack taunted, winding up his pitch. Think you can actually hit it this time? Mike narrowed his eyes, stealing his grip on the bat. With a powerful swing, he connected with the ball, sending it rocketing through the air. They watched in silent awe as it soared over the field and into the dense trees that bordered the abandoned Ashcroft Manor, its faded brick walls looming like a specter on the other side. Aw, man, Mike groaned. That ball cost us like 20 bucks. I guess we're not getting it back, Ryan muttered, shifting his weight uncomfortably as he eyed the decaying manor. The place was notorious around Willow Creek. It had been abandoned for years, ever since the last Ashcroft owner mysteriously disappeared. Jack, never one to back down from a challenge, smirked. Come on, it's just an old house. Are you guys really scared of a few broken windows? It's not just that, Jack, Ryan said, rubbing his arms against the chill. People say it's haunted. Mike laughed, though there was an edge to his voice. Those are just stories. Let's go get the ball and get out of here. We'll be quick. After a few minutes of half-hearted debate, Jack's stubbornness won out, and the three friends headed toward the manor. The wind rustled through the trees as they approached, adding to the uneasy quiet that settled around them. Up close, the house was even more foreboding. Its windows were shattered, the front steps cracked, and ivy snaked up its walls, clawing its way over every available surface. The once grand home had become a derelict shell, a shadow of its former self. As they climbed the creaking steps to the door, Ryan hesitated, his heart pounding. Guys, maybe we should just go. It's just a ball. Jack rolled his eyes, gripping the handle. The door was locked but he found a loose brick and began hammering at the rusty podlock that hung from the door. After several tries, the lock gave way with a loud snap. The door creaked open, revealing a dark hallway that smelled of mold and decay. Jack took a deep breath and stepped inside. See, nothing to be scared of, he called over his shoulder, though his voice was slightly strained. The other two followed reluctantly, each step echoing in the stillness. The entryway was vast, with peeling wallpaper, dusty chandeliers, and broken furniture scattered about. Cobwebs hung in thick, silvery drapes from every corner, and the once-polished wooden floors were now warped and littered with debris. A faint draft moved through the house, as if it was exhaling after years of silence. They began searching through the rooms, hoping to find their ball and leave as quickly as possible. As they ventured deeper into the manor, they noticed strange things. Marks scratched into the walls, an overturned chair as if someone had left in a hurry, and a pile of rotting books in the corner, their pages curling from years of neglect. Hey, guys. Ryan's voice echoed from a room down the hall. Jack and Mike hurried to find him standing in a small parlor, staring at something on the floor. What is it? Mike asked, following Ryan's gaze. On the floor, partially hidden beneath a dusty rug, was a door. It was small, unassuming, and looked like it hadn't been touched in decades. It had an old-fashioned latch, rusty and fragile looking. Think there's a basement? Jack asked, his eyes lighting up with intrigue. Ryan shook his head. I don't know, man. This place is creepy enough without going into a basement, but Jack was already at the door, fiddling with the latch. It gave way with a loud creak, and the door swung open, revealing a dark staircase leading down into the pitch-black depths. Come on, 
Jack said, his voice barely a whisper. Let's just take a look. Reluctantly, the three friends descended the stairs, each step creaking beneath their weight. The air grew colder, and the smell of mold intensified, mixed with something else, something foul and rotting. At the bottom of the stairs was a large, dimly lit room. It was filled with strange objects, old furniture draped in dusty sheets, piles of broken china, and eeriest of all, a series of wooden crates stacked against the far wall. Jack reached into his pocket, pulling out his phone to use as a flashlight. He swept the beam over the crates and gasped. In the corner of the room, suspended from a rotting wooden beam, was a skeleton. The bones were yellowed and brittle looking, as though they'd been there for a very long time. Let's get out of here, Ryan said, his voice barely audible. But Jack was too intrigued, his curiosity piqued by something else glinting nearby. On a table near the skeleton was an old tape recorder, dusty and worn, but still intact. Jack reached for it, brushing off the grime before pressing play. The recorder whirred to life, and a voice crackled through, low and distorted. To whoever finds this, beware. The Ashcroft curse is real. This house is haunted by the spirits of those who died here, trapped by a hatred that can never be sated. As the voice continued, detailing a tragic story of betrayal and revenge, the air grew colder, and a strange mist began to seep from the walls, filling the room with a hazy blue glow. Suddenly, the door at the top of the stairs slammed shut, and the three friends found themselves locked in the basement. Panicked, they banged on the door, their shouts echoing in the darkness. But as the minutes ticked by, they realized no one would hear them. They were trapped. Did, did you guys hear that? Mike whispered, his face pale. The other two fell silent, straining to listen. At first, there was nothing but the eerie hum of silence. But then, faint footsteps echoed from somewhere deep within the basement, growing louder with each passing second. They backed away from the door, pressing themselves against the cold, damp wall as the footsteps drew closer. A faint figure materialized in the mist, a tall, shadowy man with hollow eyes and a sinister grin. Welcome to my home, the figure hissed, his voice like ice scraping against stone. You came here looking for answers, and now you'll stay here, forever. The boys screamed, scrambling in every direction as the figure lunged toward them. In the chaos, Jack remembered the tape recorder. He grabbed it and threw it at the apparition, hoping to disrupt it somehow. The figure vanished as the tape recorder shattered on the floor, the mist dissipating in an instant. The door at the top of the stairs flew open, and the boys bolted up, racing through the dark hallways until they burst outside gasping for air. They didn't stop running until they were far from the manor, collapsing in a heap at the edge of the field. Their breaths came in ragged gasps, their faces pale and haunted. No one believed their story, of course. The townspeople dismissed it as a Halloween prank or an overactive imagination, but the boys knew what they'd seen, and they never went near the Ashcroft Manor again. And on quiet nights, when the wind blew just right, the people of Willow Creek swore they could hear the faint whispers of the tape, calling out from the depths of the old cursed house. <laughs>